Okay. I think we will start now. Our uh, non-isothermal uh, reactor design, graphical design. Only one part is left. I hope you have understood. Okay. Or uh, did you enjoy doing that? It is so beautiful. I say very simple, very simple way of doing things. But it is not easy for you to do on your own because I think I have drawn the lines just like that. But you have to calculate those uh, lines and then you have to draw. And this activation energy and also uh, you know this delta H Rs will give you hell, particularly the units, because you have uh, activation energy coming there in K values and K by mistake if you not able to put even proper dimensions, you will never get those lines. So, that is why you have to be very careful in drawing those lines. Anyway, today I will give you also one uh, exercise, so that you know you will practice how to draw those lines and we will draw, I will give the exercise only for irreversible reaction, because that is slightly complicated. No, reversible reaction, reversible reaction which is complicated. But then I think you know when you do complicated things, non uncomplicated things are very simple. So, that is the reason. Okay. Good. So, the last part that is left in graphical design is, is there an optimal design for this uh, you know using graphs. Okay. Analytically also we, we have the same question, is there an optimal design. Okay. What do you mean by optimal design? What do you mean by optimal design? Yeah. Okay, that minimum volume that is possible for a given conversion or maximum conversion that is, for, uh, that is possible for a given volume. Okay. And if it is multiple reaction, what is the optimal problem there? This is straightforward single uh, reaction. If when I have multiple reactions, what? Yeah, it is not the volume there, it is the yield there. Okay. Yield or selectivity, I mean both are same the way you define. Okay. Yeah. So, there the question is, that, but you do not worry about whether the reactor is smaller or larger there. Okay. So, that is why you always question there that okay, how much yield I can get, because that particular product may be having very, very high cost. So, that is why even if you forget about the total volume of the reactor, by producing more and more of that particular compound in terms of yield, okay, then you have to, I mean then you may, your plant may get lot of profit. So, that is the reason why that question is different there, right. But still you have to also find out what is the volume of the reactor for that equivalent yield, that equivalent yield given by what conversion and use that conversion to again calculate the volume uh, using the same procedures what we have done. So, here now optimal design what we discuss is that if it is irreversible exo or endo. what is the optimization here. So, I have here x a versus t graphs. So, now for irreversible you know what kind of graphs you get, what kind of graphs you get like this you get good. Yeah. Now, how do I use this information for uh, getting minimum volume for the given conversion? What is the strategy? you have already some uh, some information in your brain okay so when do you get the minimum volume it is maximum excellent abdul okay so when the rate is maximum, maximum. where do you get rate, rate maximum here at the uh, temperature. At high temperatures at the highest temperature that is possible because as the temperature is increasing here the rate is increasing this is r okay so that means um, I can go on drawing till that uh, end, you know, the, the line and then draw, 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 draw that uh, the temperature. But is there a limit? Highest temperature, you know, the first question what I asked you was, what do you mean by the minimum volume here? When do you get? So, uh, if you remember the design expressions and you remembered and you told that when you get the highest rate, then you will get the minimum volume and that highest rate will be given by here highest temperature, because temperature is involved here. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and what is that highest temperature that is possible? Uh, the, another question here. So, the, the, the uh, highest uh, temperature means, is it, you told that highest rate. Do you get this rate at one temperature or 
at various temperatures. In this case, we are talking irreversible reaction. So, that means what? For irreversible exothermic or endothermic, what should be the now strategy? Very good, I am very happy that you are able to answer all correctly. Exothermic or endothermic, what is the strategy? I mean, you know, the temperature you said, corresponding to a particular temperature, you will get the highest rate. Okay? So, now what is that temperature and what kind of uh, temperature uh, scheme I should have in the reactor? Is it one temperature? So, that means what do you call that? If you throw out the reactor, if you have one temperature. Excellent. At least one. You should have isothermal temperature, highest that is possible. This is T max. Okay. How do I decide now the T max? Yeah, economics will come at the end, but before that, taking care. Uh, uh, someone was telling? Fixed conversion? How do I choose that T max? You have ideas, I say. Already, you know, I told you also. Just think. Huh? Conversion, conversion is fixed. For a given conversion, we are talking. At a certain temperature, the how do I choose that T-max? Rate of increase will be different. Rate should be higher. That's why we we, yeah. we told that T-max. At a certain temperature. Huh? At a certain temperature. Actuation energy you don't have a choice, no? Because actuation energy fixed by kinetics. So at a certain temperature. No, no. The reaction will decompose. Rate won't be that much uh, increasing. No, no. Here, as temperature again, you are coming back to the other uh, wrong answer. Because we already decided that as temperature increases, rate will be the rate will be increasing continuously. Again, you cannot say you know the rate decreases after some time. Yes, no. I, so not telling rate decreases. The, the, the rate of the reactor is operating, operating static temperature. Yeah. Yes. Up, yeah. How do you decide that operating temperature? Abhishek already gave the yeah, uh, answer. Yeah. Okay. Highest reactor temperature. Reactor should stand. Reactor should be stand. Reactor should be stand. That means what is the factor that comes? Materials of construction. That is one. Other ones? Products. The products are the, the reactant should be uh, stable. Yeah, at a high temperature, there may be side reactions which you do not like. Okay? Even though there is a multiple reaction, you, sorry, a single reaction. So, at one point of time, you do not know, you know, there may be a, a, a separate uh, another reaction coming. That not possible. You should not uh, allow that. Then, any other thing? Oh, that is what he said. I think, you know, the, that is the materials of construction beyond which the you know the material should withstand that kind of temperature okay and also another thing the the product formation and also charring of the products you know some of the products may get burned and everything you get only carbon okay at the end <laughs> so that's why we don't want carbon including reactor if you go beyond uh, certain values okay so that is why t max is decided by now yeah materials of construction Yeah, that is one, and also side reactions, and uh, number three is charring of products. Yeah, this is true even for uh, uh, heterogeneous reactions. The similar things only what uh, same rules can be extended. But if it is catalytic reaction, what is the fourth one? Catalyst should withstand. I think most of the time catalyst will control. Materials of construction and all that there is no problem. Okay? Catalyst will control because catalyst should not be thermally deactivated. So, catalyst deactivation. Okay? So, all these things will come for this irreversible. So, it is very easy now for us to remember that okay, graphical design will tell me that I have to go for highest temperature because the rates are increasing as I increase the temperature. And uh, now, the scheme should be isothermal that means throughout the reactor I should have the same temperature. Now, the question is how do I maintain that, that particular temperature because throughout I should maintain the same highest possible temperature. How do I do that? If it is exothermic reaction or endothermic reaction. Okay? Yeah, I think before answering those questions, 
please take this. Yeah, I think you know the optimal design. Optimal design means you know minimum volume or maximum conversion depending on what is the parameter which you are going to use. Optimal design depends on the optimum temperature progression which minimizes V by F A naught for a given conversion. The optimum may be an isothermal or it may be a change in temperature in time for batch reactor comma along the length in P F R and stage to stage for a series of MFRs. Okay? Next para you can write. It is important to know what this progression is because it is the ideal which we try to approach with a real system. It also allows us to estimate how far any real system departs from the ideal. Okay? Good. Next para please write. The condition for optimum temperature progression in a given type of reactor is as follows. Whatever the composition always have the system where the rate is maximum very simple rule so i think inverted commas if you started you just close it okay so that means you know i mean whatever may be the composition you look at the temperature where you get the maximum for that temperature what is the maximum rate so when you are putting together all these rates for example in a pfr okay all the maximum rates then the reactor volume will be minimum because in the denominator average of all that rates only will be there. If you say P of R, if it is batch, same thing again. Batch and P of R simply replaced by you know space is replaced by time. Okay? Yeah. And if it is M of R, we have only one rate and also you know uh, one temperature and one conversion correspondingly. So, we know how to find out that maximum rate because we know uh, for, uh, uh, what is the corresponding temperature and uh, yeah and conversion and also corresponding rate so whether that is highest or not okay so now next one what you just write is after that the locus of maximum rates is found by examining x a versus t graphs okay that's what what we have done here this is x a versus t graph right and now we thought that rate is increasing as you increase the temperature so you can go and go further whatever temperature you want but we have restrictions these things so, you have to choose the highest, any one of the one, okay, uh, the lowest of these things, because uh, even if a catalyst is getting deactivated and materials of construction, it may withstand maybe 2000 uh, degrees Celsius, but catalyst is getting spawned after 600, you cannot go there. Okay? So, that is the lowest of this will decide which one will be the, uh, or, or side reaction may be taking place at 550 degrees solo, uh, may, maybe. Right? So, that, that is one what you have to choose. And within that now, you have to try to get this, what is the minimum volume for a given conversion or vice versa. The other also is true. Okay? Good. So, now for irreversible reactions, please take this, for irreversible reactions that we have already discussed, for irreversible reactions, the rate always increases with temperature at any composition. So, the highest rate occurs at the highest allowable temperature. This temperature is set by materials of construction, side reactions catalyst deactivation etcetera good excellent so now the second one this uh, this is the first one irreversible we have now endothermic um, endothermic reversible reaction endothermic reversible okay yeah before going to that endothermic reversible you see here yeah, I think the practical thing I wanted to ask you, how do you maintain this isothermality if I have a plug flow? It is easy to maintain uh, in uh, mixed flow, right? Yeah. So, whether I have to heat or cool to get that temperature, if it is highly exothermic, but uh, you know sometimes if the rate is low beyond certain temperature, I have to remove some heat and then maintain the temperature so that I will get the highest uh, rate, that is no problem. But for uh, plug flow, and also batch reactor, what do you do? Just I want your thinking, that is all. I think you know, how do you imagine this? See, by putting just blindly one heat exchanger like this, this is plug flow. Huh? Yeah. 
So maybe this is out. Oh, you can put in the other way also. No problem. Yeah. So this way, this is of course F A not entering, F A coming out. So now, uh, uh, how do I maintain that isotherm? That means every cross section I should have the same temperature. Then only you will get the real optimum. That is the reason why I told this is the ideal situation. That is the most ideal case. And now, how do you maintain that kind of temperatures? I think theoretically we have also told you there is no isothermal condition anywhere in plug flow, unless you put infinite number of heat exchangers. That means, every small cross section I have to take and then I have to put an heat exchanger to effectively control the temperature in that cross section okay? and cross sections you can put infinity along the length. So, right? so, that is the reason why you do not have that kind of ideality. So, that is why you have to now in reality you will just go, from, uh, go slightly away from the ideality. That is what now, that is what I think all of us do. Okay? When you are very, uh, you are all young, young, when we are all very young, one of what we imagine is that the most beautiful girl on this uh, planet should be my wife. Okay? True, boys, girls also same thing, the most handsome guy on this planet should be, but the reality is different. Okay? <laughs> Okay, reality is totally different. Okay, because I think uh, how many most beautiful girls you can find out in this on this planet. So whoever you get, she is most beautiful for you. Okay, <laughs> so that is the that is the actual adjustment with the ideal world. Correct, no? Merit? Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so that is what is the ideality. You know, deviation from ideality. That's what you know what we can do here. So one way of doing that is if I have exothermic reaction, how do I maintain? But this is very nice, huh? very beautiful. If I have exothermic reaction, how do I maintain isothermality? So that means infinite number of uh, the heat exchangers I cannot put. So I have to go to some finite number, maybe ten, maybe five. How do I do that? How we do is you cannot cross this because the, the moment you cross, some one of these things will uh, control and uh, you know you can spoil the entire reaction. So you start as much as possible. Yeah, if it if you are using a adiabatic reactor, that is one of the simplest ones. Instead of putting jacket around, you put uh, adiabatic reactor, no jacket or no heat transfer, no, no heat removal system around the reactor. But you do all that heat transfer after the reaction. That section is over. So that means you you use now multi stage, small portion heat exchanger, small portion heat exchanger. How much is this small, uh, small portion that depends on again your heat transfer and coolant and all that. So, you start that means adiabatic system you are using, reactor is adiabatic, but in between you have heat exchanger. So, if it is exothermic reaction, I will start even this is also a parameter, even T naught also which one is the correct uh, T naught also is a parameter through optimization one can find out that. So, now because it is adi adiabatic exothermic, how it moves? It moves like this, okay? But then I have to. That means I have to see my calculations that the temperature increases along with the, the uh, I mean along the length of the reactor with conversion, and then it goes to maximum this value. Correct? No. Beyond that, I cannot go. Then what I have to do? Heat exchanger I have to use. When I am using heat exchanger, there is no reaction, right? So then, what kind of line I can draw here? How oh, it can come down? How oh, okay, it can come down? Because I think, uh, see conversion, uh, see I told you there is no reaction. So, what should be conversion? Same. It is same. So, now it has reached this conversion. So, that means, again how far you have to go, again it is a optimization problem and then you let us say that you found that and again you go here. And again, go here. So, what is the type of uh, reactor now? What we have here? Section. Yeah. This is heat exchanger. Again, another section. Heat exchanger. Another section. You know, like that. You know how many you need. So, this is the reactor, and it need not be same length. Sometimes you know it will be decreasing in progression. Sometimes it will be increasing in progression, probably if it is endothermic reaction. Now, endothermic reaction, what do you do? 
It is not true isothermal. How it is isothermal? Because I cannot get that kind of isothermal. Okay. Yeah, I think this question is good. Madhikanta. Madhikanta, no? Madhikanta, okay. Yeah. So, good. Yeah. To really become isothermal, I have to move only on that. So, that is why we are telling we have infinite number of times. Right? No? Here I have put, but that means I have to start here, go here, start here, go here, start here, go here. So, that means infinite number I want. What Rajeshri? In the heat exchanger, you said there will be no reaction. We are taking the entire mixture and introducing into the exchanger. Yeah, I, I know. The assumption is that you know there is no, uh, the, the moment it comes out of the reactor, okay, out of the reactor, we have to assume that there is no reaction, which is not correct, particularly for homogeneous reactions. Okay? That is correct for catalytic reactions because there is no catalyst, no reaction. That is why, you know, I think that is sulphur dioxide to sulphur trioxide also it is used, I will tell you that one later. So, like this, but now if I have endothermic reaction, what do I do? I start with this point, that is the highest possible, right. But now temperature decreases, though this goes this side. So, this one, so this goes this side. Right? That means, temperature falls and also conversion of course, is increasing. Then, you have to see where you have to again heat now, because you have to be on this line as much as possible. Then again, so like this, till your conversion, that is the line, that is the final conversion. Okay? So, like that you have to do, see how thrilling it is if you really do because you are not doing, you do not really enjoy it. Okay? I do not know whether it is fortunately not doing or doing, uh, no, unfortunately not doing, because this is what is true chemical engineering, I say. There are so many things, there are so many wonderful, wonderful things that are happening. right? And people have been using this already, but only thing is, I think even at this point of time, uh, you, know, uh, you will get excited, provided you have interest in uh, designing this chemical engineering equipment. So, that is how what we do for exothermic or endothermic and red one I will write is endo and this white one we will write as exo. So, that is how and as I told you infinite means you will practically lie on this line that is isothermal throughout. So, inside you have definitely there is some small variation of temperature, but if I take this kind of length from here to here there may be 15 20 degrees variation. But if I take very close here and then try to do, there may be only one degree variation. So, practically almost you may get isothermal conditions uh, when you go to the overall length. So, that is how for exothermic, endothermic it is done. Okay, good. Now, reversible, uh, this is endothermic reaction reversible. What is the kind of uh, x versus t you get here? This is x a versus t. Okay. Then we have r equal to 0 something like this, correct no, this is r equal to 0, that is equilibrium, it is 0, equilibrium conversion and corresponding temperatures, good. So, now if I draw this will be like this, uh, again how the rate is, oh no, it cannot touch there, yeah. So, rate is increasing like this only, r equal to 0, maybe r equal to 1 here, so like that it increases. Now, what is the condition for here? Uh, optimal progression that means, even here we can clearly see that as temperature is increasing, rate is increasing. So, limit is again T max, yeah straight. T max, oh. this is T max. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. So, now of course, here again if you want to be exactly on the line, so there will be infinite number of heat exchangers along the length. Okay. But this is endothermic, it is very easy now to draw because we have already done here. So, we start with the highest rate, I mean highest uh, yeah, temperature corresponding to that highest rate. right? So, then I will draw like this, like this like this, if I am going for, yeah. 
may be the conversion required is this much. Yeah, then I need 1, 2, 3 reactors and 3 heat exchangers. Okay? Good. So, this is uh, actually not that thrilling when compared to your reversible exothermic. Reversible exothermic. You know the plots here. x a versus t. Here, yeah, this is r equal to 0 and we know that as uh, temperature is increasing, you will have uh, conversion falling. Equilibrium conversion itself is falling and you cannot cross equilibrium conversion. So, that is why conversion falls in a reactor where temperature is increasing and the rates, if you calculate and then plot, you may get something like this. rates are increasing like this. This is 1, okay. 10, 100, 1000, 10,000. Okay. This is 10 to the power of 4, I will just stop. Okay. In between, you have the lines. Yeah. So, here this is exciting. The reason is that um, it is not blindly as temperature is increasing, you have, you have you know rate also increasing right rate is increasing there is no problem at all as temperature is you see when compared to this rate this is definitely more right so but the achievable conversion decreasing that is thermodynamic limitation that is why this is one problem where kinetics and thermodynamics both play a role okay there also it is playing but this is uh, quite dramatic in the sense that under you cannot cross thermodynamics here right so, that is why what we do here is that we start at high temperatures. Okay? We start definitely at high temperatures. Yeah, okay. By the way, before that, uh, when we start at uh, high temperature, we will come later. But what are the maximum rate curves here? Maximum rate line will be connecting these maximum. This is locus of maximum rates maximum rates some of you may not be easily uh, you know may not be understanding this one that easily why they are called actually this is a different rate this is different rate this is a different rate and i am telling that that is the maximum rates okay if you plot x versus t it is not quite obvious but x versus t is the best way for uh, design right so but actually if i plot uh, rate versus temperature and this line is, this line is nothing but dou r by dou t equal to 0, that maximum locus line. Okay? That is what you can actually derive, you can actually differentiate that and try to find out the temperature and corresponding rates okay? or corresponding conversion also. Okay, good. So, yeah, this is the one and uh, just to tell you, I mean, so that you know your imagination will be easier. It is not that easy to imagine that how these lines are coming, this is coming, but that comes. If I just draw a line, um, if I just draw a line, yeah, if I just draw a horizontal line, what is the meaning? Conversion is the same. That means I am now talking about at a particular conversion, right? Let us say 60 percent conversion. How the rates are changing? Okay? How the rates are changing? See, this is T starting from, normally we do not uh, start from uh, initial in you know, absolute uh, temperature 0, but imagine that you are starting from absolute temperature 0. So, what is the rate there? 0. Okay, right? Then th there is slightly more rate, then slightly more rate, then slightly more rate at that conversion. Any, any, any line horizontally, it will go through all this history. Right? So, this is slightly lower, slightly higher, more higher. Then what is happening after crossing this? Again, it is decreasing. How do I plot this? That means, I have to plot this for a given conversion rate versus temperature. 
How do I plot that? This is rate versus temperature. So, how do, how do I draw that? So, yeah. So, it may go, I mean, may not be parabola exactly, right. So, this is what, then what is this point? How do I get this point? How do I get mathematically? D R V D is 0. You cannot say D, it should be do. Why? All that is happening at one conversion x, this is at x constant, x a constant, correct no? x a is the parameter. So, similarly, if I draw another uh, line, maybe somewhere above, right? What do I get? Above this I get or below this I get? Conversion. It below it. Huh? Below it. Yeah, I mean, if I draw this here. Below. Below that. Below that. Because these rates are definitely smaller than these rates. If I go here, these rates are much higher. So, that means lower conversion. If I go to lower conversion, that is what is a reversible reaction. No? Because at a higher temperature, you get high rates. But conversion will be Low. lower. That same thing only is reflecting there. So, then if I draw another line here and another line here, so how in which direction I have to show the conversion? How it is increasing? From top to the? Yeah. This is x a increasing. So, this is what, what we are telling. You know, these points are nothing but dou r by dou t equal to 0. And that is what is the line which you get here. Now, I think it is understood. Otherwise, you know, even last year also some people are asking, sir, you are telling this, but we are not able to get what is this door by dot t. That is what is the line. So, there, uh, if I plot R versus temperature, it is easy for me to tell you. I mean, for you also, it is obvious because dou R by dot t, that is where what we are. But here, there is no dou R by dot t, that means that uh, this line is dou R by dot t, but R is as a parameter that is coming there, right. But if you plot the same information in this x versus t, now you have three parameters. No? Now, I take at a constant r and then plot all that information, then you will get this line, maximum line. Okay? So, that is why, good. So, this is the one. Now, in, under these conditions, what we normally do is, our, uh, okay, our uh, information tells us that go to the highest temperature that is possible, because even though conversion is lay, uh, he is less, but rate is high. And in my design uh, expression, I have this rate in the denominator. So, I have to have definitely more. But if you want to get more conversion, what do you do? You have to come back now. So, that means, maybe I am starting some, somewhere here. right? And it is again, let us say adiabatic reaction, that is the easy one. So, then you have going like this. Right? But if I proceed like this, this is the maximum conversion I get. But my maximum conversion may be somewhere here. This is the conversion which I want. Okay? For my design, maybe 85 percent, 90 percent is the conversion which I want. So, then what I have to do? I will start as far as possible the highest, even I can start here. Right? But where do you start is also an optimization problem, T naught what is the first T naught? The, otherwise, the overall may not be optimal unless this is T naught is optimal. right? So, in this case, let us assume that this is optimal and then, yeah, uh, it is one reactor, this is one reactor P of R. Right? So, then uh, I have reactor and then I have to now cool this till what point, here it is very clear to what point you have to cool. The reason is, you will get this information from uh, what is called uh, dynamic programming. Aris is very famous for that. He only gave these conditions, but then we gave this condition. What I am going to write a little bit later is the condition without mathematics. By simple logic, he has written that condition because we know for optimality, dou r by dou t equal to zero. So similar condition he has is also wrote for this optimality, which has been proved by later with people, you know, with the actual mathematics. Okay, that condition I will tell. But uh, because it is a 
there is no reaction in the heat exchanger this is cooling now it will go and stop only at this point because the rate is same this rate line correct no? only one rate i have right on this it has to stop only on this otherwise it is not economic okay but by logical common sense i think you know then we had that one uh, even without doing mathematics also you could tell that that it has to stop only on this uh, reactor line and they did lot of work on this particular uh, exothermic reversible reactions particularly for catalytic reactions catalytic reactions we can definitely guarantee that the moment you come out of the reactor there is no reaction so that's why you have to have the same conversion same rate but only temperature is decreasing because you are now cooling the entire reaction mixture then you draw again parallel line to this where you have to stop again depends on yeah the, the mathematical thing then you have sorry yeah this line now because this line this line right so then if you want this conversion again you have to go further maybe you have to just stop there okay it may not be economical but i think correctly if you draw this then you will also go there and then that finally it has to be you know for optimality the general common sense is that we have to be both sides of this maximum this is this side this is this side if you are only one side you will never get optimal right so the condition for this to be optimal the condition for this to be optimal that means this cash crossing this side is um, integral of course you have to b if i say this is a this is b do of 1 by minus r a by do t into dx a equal to 0 this condition you get from uh, yeah do by do t okay 1 by this is 1 by minus r a okay of course which also can be written if i just uh, expand that this will be a to b 1 by minus r a whole square into do t into dx a equal to 0 same thing okay so that is the condition so in fact this one will be a condition where uh, if i plot uh, this one for example do r by do t versus x a okay i am plotting this right how it should be because the area should be zero so that means there somewhere it should be positive somewhere it should be negative so it will be like this where this is a this is b okay so positive area this area must be equal to this area so that is the condition so that means you do this try to find out the rates and differentiate and then try to find out this area going on crosses goes and at this point you have to stop here if you are doing graphically if you are doing by dynamic programming that will automatically fix the that corresponding uh, uh, temperature okay good so this is the one so that means this is exactly what is happening in uh, so2 to so3 plus half o2 so3 this is gas this is gas this is gas all gases and it's a catalytic reaction and they use adiabatic reactor i will tell you i think why adiabatic are used a little bit later when you are coming to individual reactors okay adiabatic reactors are generally used if you don't have very high exothermic heat so that means around uh, 25 to 30 kilo calories per mole that is medium if you have 60 70 kilo calories per mole that is very high 60 70 kilo calories means that's highly exothermic right so almost isothermal you will get if you have 5 6 uh, or 10 uh, kilo calories per mole delta hr i am talking about delta hr okay so those conditions yeah so this is what is this and even this line how to get is simply differentiate this like what i have minus ra equal to simple reversible reaction k1 ca minus k2 cr 
dou r by dou t because k1 is nothing but k1 0 e4 minus e by rt you know by, uh, minus e by rt and k2 also is simply k2 0 e4 minus e2 by rt that you have to differentiate that i can give in the examination this dou r by Okay, yeah, I think maybe you have class. 